Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now the one and only David Howard Thornton, and he played Art the Clown in <laughs> Terrifier and Terrifier 2, which is going to be coming out soon. Yes. How you doing, David? <laughs> I am sweating my balls off right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was out for a jog and everything, and it got hot today here in New York, and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's hot here, too. I know, uh, just to let you know, um, if we get disconnected, it's because we are in a tornado warning right now in Maryland. Oh, so. <laughs> my God. <a> <laughs> just to warning? let you know, if we get uh, disconnected, um, it's probably because power went out from, like, right now it's not really doing anything, but it's yeah. how it looked like to get a little dark, so... Just to let you know. <laughs> Good to know. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's safe. I, I, I grew up in Alabama, so I'm very, very, yeah. very used to tornadoes. <laughs> yeah. We really, we, every time we get a tornado warning, we usually don't get anything, but yeah. I mean, you never know. But, you know, with the power and everything, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, I, they're no joke. I was in one when I was uh, in fourth grade in Huntsville. Oof. We In 1989, we had an F4 that came in and, like, wow. destroyed the church I was at and my elementary school. So that was crazy. It was scary. Just dropped out of the sky out of nowhere, no warning, anything. Just boom, looked like like a bomb went off. Yeah, yeah. So I'm used to tornadoes. (laughs) I don't miss them. (laughs) You're just as crazy as Art the Clown, right? (laughs) Yeah. I was like, oh great, another one of these things. (laughs) So how did you get your start into acting? I oddly enough, church theater. (laughs) It's just it's just kind of ironic considering what I do now. (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> Makes yeah. sense. So, yeah. what was your audition like for Terrifier? It was um pure improv based. It was I go in there and I see everybody else has got scripts and I started to freak out because this is my first big film audition mm-hmm. and I didn't have a script. I'm just like, oh god, no, 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 no. And they call me in and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I don't have a script. I'm like, oh, you don't need one. I'm like, oh, well, then what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, well, just improvise a scene where you decapitate someone and you're happy about doing it (laughs) and go. (laughs) And I just came up with this whole shtick on the fly. I don't know where it came from in the deep, dark recesses of my brain, but I did this whole thing where I like cartoonishly snuck up behind my victim, like knocked him out then sawed off his head, picked it up, tasted it, didn't like the taste. So I took out a salt shaker and seasoned it, tasted it again. Gave it a thumbs up, bathed in the blood, and like skipped out on my merry way. And that's awesome. That's that's what got me art. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. And art the clown, he is one terrifying clown. He really is. Like he 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 doesn't speak, which I don't know if it's because he chooses not to speak or if it's because he can speak, but yeah. the it's like all of his movements and all of his like is like mannerisms are through his gestures. Like that's where his is your fear comes from from that because yeah. You know, he's that evil. Like, he doesn't need to speak. (laughs) That's what's fun about him. He's just like, it's, he, I don't have to worry about lines. Right, absolutely. It was great. I, 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 I go on set and everybody else is pouring over their scripts. I'm like, what am I doing today? Oh, okay, stab, stab, stab. Cool, gotcha. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so we know that Terrifier 2 was announced. Um, so did you start filming that yet? And how did it come about on bringing you back for the sequel? Yeah, we um we finished the script back in I think early 2019. Yeah, early 2019. Okay. Uh, that's when I first read it, and we started. Uh, we did a fundraiser that summer for it with Indiegogo, mm-hmm. and we beat our goal by 400 percent. Nice. It was amazing. We we that's raised awesome. what we wanted to raise in the first 30 minutes. I think that's great. Which was boom, it, and we just kept going, and I was like, "This is amazing." Yeah. We did not anticipate that, but so it's basically a film that's funded f- basically fully by the fans, which is really yeah. cool. But uh, we started filming um, that fall of 2019, and of course, COVID kind of delayed some things because mm-hmm. we were almost finished filming last year, last yeah. March, when we had to go in lockdown here in New York. And we went back later on last year, and um, I filmed. I think my last scene not counting pickups, what I'm going to have to do sometime. Right. But uh, I filmed that in December, which is our big, huge, crazy kill scene in the movie, which is, good God, <laughs> epic. So, <laughs> But now uh, Damien is polishing the first 
cut of this film and he's going to start shipping it around to uh, uh shopping around to uh distribution and once we get that squared away we hope to release it as soon as possible so i mean we're hoping for fall this year but that all depends on how quickly we can get distribution behind right and it would be good for a fall release because oh, halloween yeah. season like you know that really is the epitome of when horror movies really should be released for the most part oh yeah and it sets it sets place on um takes place on halloween too so i mean like oh, that's awesome. it ha- it's, it's perfect mm-hmm. but you know like when we released uh terrifier one we released that in march of 2018 yeah and we still did well and then they had another resurgence of it when fall came so it, yeah. it didn't really hurt us even releasing that early in the year but yeah still we'd rather do you know fall it just yeah. feels right Exactly. Plus we want to get it out as soon as possible for everybody because we can't wait for everybody to see this beast of a Absolutely. film. Absolutely. It, it's looking like it's clocking in at over two hours now, too. So it's right. it's a it's awesome. a huge film. Awesome. That's great. Like, I, and I like movies that aren't too long. So like two hours, two and a half hours, that would be good for me, especially yeah. for a horror movie. And I like I I like the the reason why I like Terrifier is because it's gore based. It's you know death mm-hmm. based. Like it, it doesn't really have quote unquote that story aspect. It's more of, you know, here's a clown, he's demented, he's gonna kill you. And <laughs> that's what a lot of horror fans like. You know, that's what we want. We we don't go to a horror, you know, a, a, watch a horror movie just for, you know, you know, two people to fall in love. Oh no. Like we, we we go to see a horror movie to to kill them. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to sit there for like an hour, hour and a half of just exposition yeah. and you know, right. oh blah blah. He's like, get to the monsters. Right. <laughs> it's Absolutely. like get to the killing, get to the crazy stuff. Absolutely. And I, and I, I also think right now we live in a time where people are used to longer movies. Mm-hmm. You know, people are sitting down for Marvel films that are three hours long and they have no problem with it. So I'm, I, yeah. I think it's okay. The main thing is you, you keep the audience entertained and engaged yes. the whole entire keep time. Keep them engaged. Exactly. That's, that's the main point of it. Because it's, once they start losing enjoyment and losing engagement yeah. out of that movie, they're not going to stay tuned in. And they're yeah. going to, you know, and then, like they say, classic word of mouth is everything. So you might do good the first weekend, but if word of mouth goes like, oh, we're not getting, you know, we're, that movie, it, it really keep, get, you know, knocks you out of it halfway through, then people aren't going to yeah. want to see it because they're that's not going to sit through that. Exactly. So that, that's that's the point of like a horror movie, to keep people on the, on the edge of their seats. Like, you know, you know, with, especially with the jump scares, the kills, like that's what we want to see. Oh, and, and don't worry, we're not pulling back on the kills at all. <laughs> that, the first one was brutal and it was yeah. great. I, I think we've actually just gone further with the kills in this one they're just brutal and just mean and i think we're gonna discuss some people but I mean, that's what we're supposed to do right yeah you know, horror is supposed to push those boundaries and see what Absolutely. they can get you know you gotta you gotta you know try to tread that line and see if you can cross it a few times and you, right. you gotta take risks that's what we're doing with this thing we threw everything we had into it and we, we think we've got a fun movie it's i mean we are a little bit more story based this time around because we really want to build up this new uh, protagonist which is mm-hmm. i just love this character she's like a character that damien has had in his mind even before he had art in his mind nice so this is you know she's a very ellen ripley you know uh sarah connor type of character so it's just awesome yeah so That's, it's, it's gonna be fun oh yeah. dude now, so is there good. anything you've done with Art the Clown in the sequel that would be different from the first one, or is he pretty much going to be the same character, or is he more brutal? Or I would say he's um, more confident in himself now. He's a little bit more cocky because you know he came back from the dead, and I think he realizes he's a little bit stronger than he initially thought, and so. Right. He's a lot more vicious this time around. I that's why I said like the kills are even more over the top. I, I think he's just he, he he's now like wow I got carte blanche now so I can just really have fun because <laughs> that's what he's all about. He's all about playing with his food as I like to say. So. Yeah, exactly. That's, I can't wait to see this. Like the reason why I'm smiling is because I'm so excited like just hearing this because the first one was so good like it really was and. I mean, I watched it. I, I'm not sure if it's still on Netflix, but I watched it when it was on Netflix, at least. Um, yeah. I think it was like a couple months ago. I watched it like quite a few times straight. I, I just love that movie. Like, it's really good. And it's got the gore factor. Thank is you. amazing. Like, it's just clever. It's clever. Oh, it's, it's all Damien. He's just a talented dude. He's, yeah. he, he's, a, he's a true horror fan and he knows what horror fans want to see. And so that's what he brings right. to the screen. And, right. and it shows. 
it does. It really shows. He's put so much time and effort into this, and it's like we're we're all about the pro, uh, the practical effects. Right. And he, I think he's really upped his game in this one because we originally had some guys that were going to come on board and help us out with all the the practical effects, but they ended up bailing like a few weeks before we started filming. So Damien just had to basically take that all on himself to do all over again, and he did it and it's i think he even topped himself in the first one it's just like you can tell how he's improved in a lot of ways there's like this one prosthetic where uh while i was working with it the first day i i thought it was the actor and i was blown away i was like wow it even had like a mechanism in it so it could breathe wow. so it was it was the most disconcerting thing to see when you're actually attacking this thing and it's like breathing and you're like wow this is well i <laughs> that's awesome so it yeah. was all practical effects none of it was cgi yeah this it's i would say 99.9 percent .9 practical effects there might be a little bit of cgi here but he only he believes in using cgi just to enhance what you really can't do with practical effects right. just to, but he, he doesn't want to rely on it he's like okay Absolutely. well if he, he he i mean he's like me he hates fake blood yeah I, I hate seeing fake blood splatters in movies and stuff like that. So it's like, yeah, all the blood flying everywhere, that's real. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Cause, like, I have a, a small indie company as well, and we, we're mm -hmm. actually starting our next movie. And one thing I, I me and my, uh, my, and the director, he's my uh, co owner of my company with me. And we said that one thing we want to do in this movie is have use the money from our Indiegogo for practical effects. Like, we mm -hmm. don't want CGI, we don't like fake blood. And nobody, you could tell yeah. it's fake blood. Oh, and, and it looks so bad. Yeah, yeah it does. Like, especially when it's like pulling out of. Yeah. Oh my god, it's like what really gets me is when you see it pulling on someone's shirt or something like that, and yeah. it just looks like because they're like, oh, we don't want to have to use multiple shirts, and we have to change it out every time. I'm like, yeah, tough. Yeah. You know, it just it looks better when you actually have the splatter go on the shirt and it's all pulling yeah. out, and it's because that's natural looking. It looks real. You can tell when it's fake. Yeah, absolutely. The one scene in Freddy vs. Jason that really, really irritates me and irks me, it makes me cringe so much when the door uh, crushes the security guard and mm -hmm. the blood is all on the floor. It's like, oh my, oh, that blood looks so fake. Like, you can yeah. tell that's CGI. Like, you can tell it's not practically done. Like, it and they're like, so much like easier. This big budget company, you would think they could, you know, get a, a gallon of blood and put it right there on the floor. Yeah. It's it's so easy. It it, it yeah. saves some money. It saves yeah. so much more money just to I know. just pour actual blood on the well, you know, not actual blood, but, you know, you know, no right. movie blood on, right. on Right, exactly. So speaking of blood and death, um, wow, that was a great segue. <laughs> what is your favorite death scene that you got to perform in the movie? Mm. In the first one, I'm guessing you're meaning. First one. <laughs> yes, first well, one. Yeah, I can't talk about the ones in the next Absolutely. one. I we'll want to. <laughs> oh, boy, do I want I can't wait till I can I'll, talk about it. Hey, those. I'll have you back for when the second one comes out. And we'll discuss that oh, one. Oh, my God. There's so much fun stuff I got to do in the second. Some gross stuff, too. I mean, I had moments where I was... It's a good thing they weren't running sound because I'm over just going, oh, <laughs> gross. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't have the camera on my face, so you didn't see me do it. You just saw my hands, but I'm up there going, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, in, in the second and uh, the first one, I mean, uh, I would say like my favorite kill and most people are going to probably think it would be the hacksaw scene. But I really love the decapitation of the, uh, the exterminator, right? Mm -hmm. Just saw off his head and pop it back like a Pez dispenser and then that pop it awesome. right off his head. It was that was fun. And it's such a good decapitation. It it's was. just that was probably bloody. one of the best ones I've ever seen in any movie I've probably ever seen. That decapitation was freaking amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was like a so clean good. Cut. It was this great. It was perfectly done. Yeah, I was like, I, you got to hand it to Damien. It's just like yeah. he's he's just that good. Yeah, and like when, when do we were the doing SFX? it, what's that? Did Damien do the SFX for it? Yeah, he does all that himself. He's just awesome. a one man army. That's awesome. That's how you save money. You don't have to rely on other people and their schedules. You know, do as much of it as you can, or whatever you can do, you outsource it. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you save money, too. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, he loses his sanity, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how he keeps himself sane because, like, he's the hardest working person on this film because, yeah. you know, we always – he and I usually have to show up to set before anybody else does because it mm -hmm. takes so about three hours to put my makeup on. 
Right. So we show up before anybody else. And then he's usually the last person to leave because he has got to take the makeup off. Just not myself, but the other actors as well. Right. And then he's got to stay up and start making the stuff for the next day. Yeah. So he's probably going off at like two or three hours of sleep every single day when we're nice. filming. And it's just like, I don't but know. It's so worth it because when yeah. you see that final product, it's like, damn, I did all of that. And yeah. it was grueling and it was stressful as all hell, but look what we made. Yeah. And yeah, that's, it really shows. That's so true. That's what we tell ourselves too when we're sitting there on hour 18 and we're cold and wet and yeah. miserable and just like tired. Yeah. It's like, this is suffer for now so as cranky as we are we're like we'll suffer it's gonna be worth it it's gonna be totally <laughs> worth it. we're gonna be at conventions one day talking about how much fun we had even though it's miserable <laughs> <laughs> but then you see that final product is like that yeah entire gr- crankiness the entire sleepiness and you know everything that we were going through in the makeup yeah. chair every all the hours the late nights and everything it was so worth it when that final yeah and, and that that happens even when we're on set because I'll be able to watch the playback and it's yeah. like those are the things that even when I'm tired if I get to watch the playback it kind of hypes me up again because yeah. I'm like oh wow that looked awesome that's, that's so cool oh okay now I'm ready to go let's keep going <laughs> <laughs> awesome so um so was there anything specific or special that you had to do to make Art the Clown more menacing and terrifying um, I think what I did was um, I focused more on the physical aspects of the character mm-hmm. as opposed to what Mike Gianelli, who originated the character, him, he was, he was fantastic. He set a solid foundation. He played him, him in All Hallows Eve, right? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah, he did a fantastic job. He made my job easier because I didn't have to totally just create the character right. on my own. I had something to go off of. But he doesn't have like the experience in physical comedy like I have, and when I found out, you know, how um, versatile the the um, the makeup was that I was going to be wearing, I was like, oh, this is something I can really utilize more. Because usually when you have your silent villains in movies, it's usually a guy with a mask and you can't see their face or their real face. So, you know, all the acting has to be done with their shoulders and like head movements and stuff like that. I had the, the luxury of being able to use my face in addition to my body. Yeah. And so I really, and since he's a clown, I was like, well, you know, things would have to be exaggerated even more and so that's what i really wanted to focus on were those exaggerated facial expressions so you, you could even though he's not saying anything you know what's going on up there in his head and it, i i had so much fun with that just playing that's around cool. with that it really is and it's less stre- it's not i wouldn't say less stressful but it's more it's better that you didn't have any dialogue because you didn't have to focus on what do i have to say here what do i have to say there and delivering it it was right. all just, you just had to focus. How am I going to do the movements? How am I going to do the thing? Yeah. Like, I love when you're in the diner and you're just like making these faces at these girls and you're <laughs> like, like, you know, you know, doing all that stuff. It was so cool. It was, it was funny, but it was creepy. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's Very like that creepy. makeup does so much for the creepiness too. It's just like, yeah. it just automatically makes him creepy just by the way he looks. So that, right. it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And, and I'm glad. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you keep going. Go I was gonna say I'm just glad that when they um when they did the uh you know the makeup for Art the Clown it wasn't like it Pennywise it you know yeah. like where it was like the 1990 version where it's like he's a like a normal clown from the circus or like a more creepy version of a, like the clown of the circus like in the you know the reboot of 2007 yeah. that. but I'm glad that they went their own way with this like because they're because. I mean clowns are all different ways they're not like that you know all the colorfulness you know you don't have to be colorful right. a clown. And I love how they added it and having them white and black, like that made them darker. It gave them that darker personality because mm-hmm. it used the, you know, the color of black, like, you know, the, the absence of color and white, every color. And like yeah. put it together and it, it meshed well with the character. Oh, it does. And it makes the blood stand out so much more yes. too when it splatters on him, which is really oh, cool. But that, but that's something Damien did deliberately because that's what he did. He, he looked at us like, oh, well, who's the most famous clown in horror? Pennywise. Well, right. he didn't want to do anything that was like Pennywise. So he tried to make Art the polar opposite of Pennywise, where, you know, Pennywise is loud and talks and cracks jokes and everything. Art's silent. Pennywise is yeah. hair. Art is bald. Pennywise mm-hmm. is colorful. Art is black and white. Pennywise um, doesn't really, he, he uses fear, you know, he changes shapes and stuff like that to scare people. Art uses 
actual weapons and props and everything like right. that. So he's, he, he did everything to make art the polar opposite of Pennywise, which I thought was a very smart move because it so was. many other clowns try to be all the same. They try to, you know, it's right. like art one of these things that just kind of stands out on his own. But I, mm -hmm. I think now we're going to start seeing people trying to imitate art. So <laughs> they probably will. And yeah. some, some I, I think most of them, they're not going to succeed because it, it's not just even based on the character. It's also who plays the character. Like, I mean, you can have, you can't, you can't have anybody play the character, you know what I mean? Because if like you do it justice, like you did really Thank well, you. but you can get an actor that might not be able to get the motions down or get, or be as terrifying. You knew what the character was and you portrayed it. And it really is up to the actor. Like the actor does, you know, makes the character what it is mm -hmm. like, you know, and you did a really good job with that. Thank like you, you really Thank came you. off terrifying. It, it you. really worked. <laughs> I think the only person that could probably do it better than myself would be Doug Jones. So <laughs> yeah, he, he did good. Yeah, uh, I could do that. but you did, you did, a, you did amazing. You really did. Thank you, um, thank and I you. really think that I can't wait to see Terrifier too. Like I'm really anxious about this. Oh, like, we've had so much fun with it. It's just, I, I like I said, so everything's just been dialed up to eleven on. Right. Part two is just everything. I think it's everything has surpassed what I thought terrifier was one was so it's, i'm so excited for it because i i think damon is going to be you know this is going to be something that really cements damien and his abilities and everything out there in the world and he totally deserves it because he's put Absolutely. his heart and soul into this thing and just like right. i i've never seen anybody work this hard on anything so much in my life and it's like he deserves the success right now i think absolutely so speaking of the grueling uh uh, makeup and costuming process of, of creating art the clown can you walk us through how that was done yeah it's um first of all i had a mold made of my face okay. which is not the most fun thing to do <laughs> because it's very claustrophobic it, it, it takes about an hour or so and they just totally just cover your whole entire head with a goo and you have like a little straw basically to breathe through it's not fun the funny thing was even though they did this they ended up not using my uh mold Oh wow! Because yeah, because the sculpt that Damien did on it, he wasn't totally happy with it, as opposed to the sculpt he did of Mike Gianelli's. Right. So he actually uses Mike Gianelli's mold for my mold, wow. and so he just has to spend extra time when he's putting the uh, the gelatin mask that he makes. Mm -hmm. It's one big huge piece, and he just glues right. it to my face. He has to spend more time with it because he has to make sure it conforms to my face, even though it wasn't made for my face. Right. Wow. So it's very meticulous. It takes it takes a good while to put it on, and then once he's got that glued down, then he starts to paint it. Mm -hmm. So awesome. that is yeah. And then once he got does the initial paint, then we usually have to start adding all the blood splatters and matching mm -hmm. them up to like previous days, which is that's a pain because it's like uh, continuity, blood continuity is yep. a big pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's it, and as big of a pain in the ass it really is. It's something that needs to be done properly because yeah. people pick up on that. Oh yeah, that's just an ongoing joke on set. I'm always yeah. just like, yeah, we're well, just gonna have that one guy say, like, "Excuse me, but in scene 34, Art had a splot of blood that was here. In the next scene, it was down I here instead. This is the worst movie ever. Fix this." <laughs> <laughs> we were always just joking about that kind of stuff. It's, That's it's, hilarious. You know, you got to because we're yeah. like, yeah, you know. out of it. No, but I, I sometimes think those little imperfections are part of a charm of a movie too. Right, you know, Easter I, eggs, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh look, they messed up here. <laughs> yep, exactly. The best of the best actually have those type of errors. Look at yeah. how Michael Myers coming out of the bush, and then when he's gone, and Annie comes up to the bush, you see. A puddle of cigarette smoke coming out of the bush from John Carpenter behind the bush. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that, like you know, uh, I seen that on IMDb trivia. I'm like, wait a minute, and I went and looked back. I'm like, there's a puff of smoke coming out behind the. Bush. I love it. That's I love that kind of stuff. I That's do too. Fun. It's it's awesome. It's awesome behind the scenes tidbits. I think one of my favorite ones is I can't remember what movie it was. It came out of, in the past decade or so, but it's like one of the extras in the background's got a push broom, and he's actually not, you know, he's not like sweeping the actual ground. He's sweeping the <laughs> air with it, and it's just like, I, wow. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw the King of Queens it's a TV sitcom. Uh, yes. Yeah, I love that. So the one episode where uh, Arthur's hosting a dinner party, Holly's uncle, uh, he's playing the piano. And 
He's, he's playing it and you can see him playing it and he's not even touching the keys. <laughs> so things like that. I love that stuff though, because it's like, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty funny. It's pretty funny yeah. that, you know, like behind the scenes bloopers, so to speak, or Easter eggs that are oh, hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like, did you shave your head for the role of Art the Clown or did they use a bald cap? Um, they used a bald cap at okay. first and then, but I, I still never shaved my head. We just, mm-hmm. I just have my hair cut short usually okay. for it. Yeah. Nice. Just, yeah yeah it, it it was it was a pain it just took more time to use the bald cap and yeah. we just discovered when we were doing conventions it was like oh yeah you don't really have to use the bald cap we can just put this over your head you really don't notice that much of a difference with your <laughs> nice. hair so i'm like oh right. good that saves time it did it saved time and you can still tell that it looks like you're bald like you can't really yeah. notice the difference you can't notice the difference yeah. at all really so that, that's really cool yeah. um so did you do all of your own stunts in terrifier i'm assuming you did um, pretty much, pretty much. In in part two, I have some uh, a little bit of stunt double type stuff. Um, mm-hmm. in the first one, I would say uh, I do have a stunt double, and it's so funny because who it is? It's our producer Phil Falcone, and nice. Phil and I are about the opposites you can be body wise. It's like it's he, he's a little short, you know, barrel chested Italian guy, and you know, I'm tall, skinny, you know, beanpole. It is, it, but he drove the truck through that door. Oh wow! It, yeah, and he did it in one take. He was, but they just slap a little bit of makeup on his face just in case you see him. But it's it's him going through that door, and That's it's hilarious. It's because he was like, no one. If anybody's gonna get killed, it's gonna be me. So right, because <laughs> that was that was real. That was real. He <laughs> it was just like that's insane. Awesome. How do they do that that scene when he crashed through? Like, what was that a real door or how it, was that? It, done? they they built a wooden door that they just put up and so it could break away but you know still it was yeah still a solid door that was up right. and he he literally just drove a truck right in yes. through it <laughs> so like, you just oh, need God. like any specific permission for that no because <laughs> it, it was one of our producers uh uh garages that we used so okay yeah that larry was just like yeah go ahead you can just, crash just through through my through. garage yeah exactly <laughs> that worked though it really yeah, did. it worked it was, it was yeah. amazing he's, he said it was the scariest thing because he said at first it looked like he had a big target and the closer and closer he got to he's like oh god it's small it's smaller it's just oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god and bam <laughs> and then he's got to hit the brakes as soon as he goes through it so it was, oh that was nerve-wracking that was so nerve-wracking but he did it so yeah, yeah that, that was my stunt double in the first one awesome. and, I, and i have a few times you know where i had stunt doubles in the second nice. one more for like like maybe it feels like the end of the night and i was just exhausted and they, mm-hmm. they you know it's like i i really don't have the strength really right now to continue swinging at something and i, yeah. I know like one one of these prosthetics was the one use prosthetic so it was like and I, I, there was something i was going to have to hit really hard with something and i'm like i just didn't i have horrible depth perception because right. I, I wear glasses of course I can't wear them on set but um <laughs> and so I'm like I, I was so afraid of messing that because I I, I, I did not want to mess that up and I was like oh god okay could, could someone else do this because I because you don't see you only you only see my arm mm-hmm. oh not my arm but the arm of art going through with the thing so you, you can't really tell it's not me but it's like I just did not want to risk messing up that one shot it's just like i'd rather someone else has got better aim and it's like got a little bit more strength than me i, I think those are sometimes you got to put your ego aside i think yeah and do what's best for the project yeah yeah yeah, Absolutely. yeah. and so that i was like yeah go ahead go ahead and <laughs> swing at it so there have been a few times where other people have stepped into my shoes I, I think actually in um terrifier it's damien's foot that comes down on the, oh, nice. the, the prosthetic he, he shot that himself and Nice. that so yeah so, so sometimes it's not necessarily me in the costume when it's those kind of shots it might be right. like one of one of the the directors or assistant director or something one of the crew guys on set and, you know just right it's like oh, okay we just need to do this real quick shot we really don't need david's face here so we'll have someone else do it so yeah so um what was the hardest thing to do when you were filming terrifier oh definitely the hacksaw scene Right. it was it was the night with Catherine because that was just so dangerous to do mm-hmm. because uh it, we're literally hung her upside down <laughs> and this is something we had to build ourselves and it's very dangerous to hang a human being upside down for more than 45 seconds and so we would only film in 30 second chunks and would have to swing her back up and let her rest and it was 20 degrees that night we had no heat in there and 
I know I was freezing cold, and I know she was definitely freezing cold, considering she was wearing nothing. Yeah. Except for basically a g-string. <laughs> so it was just like, and then she's covered with all that blood. I'm like, it was tough. It was very tough. It was a, it was one of those nights where we weren't all joking around a whole lot on set. I mean, I would joke around a little bit with her just to try to keep her at ease and stuff yeah. like that. You yeah. know, but you know, it wasn't like the you know the the kidding around that we usually had on set because I was like, this is a very serious thing we're doing. It's very very dangerous, and it's also she's she's in a very you know compromising position right. especially as a woman in in a room full of guys or like let's treat her like the queen she is right now and take right. good care of her and because this is going to be the scene also that makes or breaks this film we're like this is going to be the scene everybody's talking about we have to do this right but we have to do it right but safe and Absolutely. we did i mean unfortunately she still got sick afterwards because of still with all the um going up up and down and up and down and up and down upside down like that it, it caused a little bit of inner uh inner ear problems for about a week or so with her but you know. but she was totally on board for it because she as well knew what that scene was going to become and she was like yeah, yeah let's do this that's like it's the whole thing it's like we'll suffer now but it's going to be worth it in the long run absolutely it's, and it, it did show like it, it came off really good like yeah. i mean if i mean she was a trooper really like she yeah. really really you know sucked it up she didn't like you know play i mean i don't know if she complained but you know what i mean like she did it she knew what, yeah. she, what she signed up for and she made sure it happened because she knew that this is gonna come out really good why half ass it when you already got to mm -hmm. do it anyways uh, that's, that's something i have to say about my female co-stars on both films it's just like I, I i'm probably the whiniest little bitch on set <laughs> compared to them when it comes to this kind of stuff i'm like it's, i i like i, I guess because i i have my knees are so bony so when i'm down my knees after a while i'm like ow 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 i got stand <laughs> ow 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 <laughs> that kind of stuff and they're doing all this stuff and they're usually wearing a lot less clothing than i am wearing and it's freezing cold and all that and they're not complaining at all and i just feel like i'm like oh i'm over here going mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh man they're all showing me up but that's just like <laughs> that just tells you like the type of people we have working on this are are right. are, are my castmates are just fantastic and it's just yeah. like it and i think it's going to show especially with uh, lauren lavera who's playing sienna in part two i think everybody's just going to fall in love with her it's just like she's oh, amazing I, I, I think she just brought the film to a different level with uh, her acting in it mm -hmm. as well awesome so what was the best part that about filming terrifier and what was the worst oh the best part my god i i think it was just um God, I, I think it was just the best part was just being part of that crew. It was just like it's I, I've made friends for life in this. That they're like family now. I think that was the best part of it. It's like I it was such a great group of people to work with both films. It's just like it, like Damien has got a great eye for casting the right people that can work really well together. And it's like we all have fun. It, we might have different ideologies and all that kind of stuff on set. We might have a little argument here or there, but like we're family. Yeah. And that's how family is. And I, I, I think that's probably the best part of it. It's like, yeah, it's like we've, we've kind of formed our own team and we're all kind of working on other projects together outside of Terrifier. We're working on another film called Stream, which uh, Mike Levy, who played the exterminator in part one, he's directing that and Damien's doing the practical effects on it. And I'm playing one of the killers in it, and we have a lot of horror legends involved with that. And, right. and most of our crew from Terrifier is also on this. And it, it feels like we're basically starting our own studio system. Right. Among, amongst ourselves. Like, okay, so we don't have the Hollywood engine behind us. Well, well why don't we just make our own studio? Right. That kind of feels that, like what that, we're I mean, doing. That's what I did. And it, I mean, hey, even if we don't pay, even if you don't pay yourselves, just making the movies yeah. and saying, hey, I made this. That's yeah. the best thing you can ever say is I made this. Yeah. And I, I think that's what's been so great about this. It. Like everybody that's doing this is like, yeah, we're not making millions of dollars doing this. We're doing this because we want to and we, we are fun. very passionate about it. Yeah. yeah, and it's fun. And we have fun with each other as well. As so there's so much just kidding around and joking around going on set, which is so much fun. So you, it's one of those things you don't expect on a horror set when things are so grim and brutal and all that. But, you know, the cameras go off, we're all cracking jokes and farting and all that. <laughs> it's just whatever. Nice. It, like, we had one night where uh, Jason Levy, who played, um, the, 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 he was the bald cop in the first yeah. one. 
he, it was a night where we're out, like, I think probably hour 18 or something like that. We're all tired. And he was just trying to cheer us all up. So he comes busting out of the dressing room in uh, Sienna's Valkyrie costume. Right. And it's just like, oh, God. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> it was just the funniest thing. It's That's just awesome. like... He's like, hey, guys, <laughs> how do you like mine? But <laughs> just like, oh, my so God, it, it, it just cheered us all up. And that's the kind of stuff that goes on set all the time. It, that, and it's so good to have fun because you don't want to, if, yeah. if you make it like a working environment where you, you know you got to work, but if you make it yeah. all work, then people aren't going to enjoy it. And then, you know, nobody's going to want to work with you. Yeah. But when it becomes fun on set, joking and you know, you make you obviously when it's time to you know do your scenes, you do your scenes, but yeah. you know, behind the scenes, have some fun, joke around. You know, that's what makes a good film studio and it makes a good set. You know, experience oh, yeah. and all that for the movie. It really does. It's a very collaborative set too. It's not just Damien's idea because I've worked with directors that that are like that, where they're like, it's my way or the highway. Right. Damien's one of these very collaborative directors. Like he wants to hear other people's ideas, right. especially when something goes wrong. We're like, oh God, how are we going to fix this? Right. Okay. Like, like something breaks and we don't have a replacement for it. Okay. How, what are we going to do to make up for this? Okay. How, and so we all kind of just put our heads together. Right. Or it's like someone has a fun idea for something I can do in a scene. They're like, Hey, what if he tries this? I'm like, Hey, let's go ahead and try that. And we'll, we'll film it and see if it works or not. It's just like this. Because we, we yeah. all want it to be the best it can be, so that's so it's all all inclusive, all inclusive, Absolutely. which I love. As for the worst part about it, I would say is um, it's like some of the environments we work in are just not the most comfortable. It's like the building we filmed the first one in is uh had no heat, had no running water, none of that kind of stuff, and so that was kind of miserable working in there. And, yeah. and like one of the locations we filmed at for part two was uh. In, in, in a basement of a building that was so it's it's um it's the fright factory in philadelphia and it's it's used only part of the year for you know a haunted house other part of yeah. the year it's just all closed down and everything like that so they it's very cold in january in there it's very <laughs> damp and like one night like one of the uh there was a, a leak from the toilet and the the floor above us coming down to ours and it was just like, oh, God, what's that horrible smell? Like, oh, no, that's what's leaking from the ceiling? Oh, oh God, no. It's that, those kind of things. But, you know, you deal. You deal. Yeah. And it, it makes for fun stories one it day. It does. Too. It really does. So the last question I got for you, uh, do you have any other projects in the works that you'd like to tell the listening and viewing yeah. audience about? Yeah, well, first of all, like I said, I'm working on stream. Yep. I, I'm about to next month. I'm gonna be, I, I think I'm going to be wrapping up on that, doing my last big scene. We're, we're having to build a whole set for this one set piece, and it which is pretty cool. I wish I could say more about what the movie's about, but we're trying to keep a lot of that stuff under under wraps. But we're hoping yep. it's going to become another horror franchise. It's a really cool concept. Nice. Uh, you could probably infer a few things just by the name Stream, right. but um. But we, we have a lot of big names from the horror world involved. And it's almost like an Expendables type version of a horror slasher movie. And it's it's like being on set with some of these people has just been an amazing experience. Like people I've grown up watching since I was a child and yeah. you know, loving their work. And I'm like, oh, my God, I get to be on set with like mm -hmm. I can say because he's on the IMDb page, Jeffrey Combs. That's awesome. And it's just like, oh my God, I, I just went one night and it wasn't I wasn't even in the scene with him. And I, I was like, can I just sit on the side and watch right and they're like yeah sure and he, he had no problems with it and i was like this is it was just like a master's class in acting right like, being able to watch him and i was like this is wonderful and it, that's what it's been like working with all these other great actors so it's, it's been it's it's every horror geek stream come true working on a film like this and it's it is it's going to be a fun film. Like I said, uh, Damien's doing the practical effects for it. So, you know, the kills are going to be pretty gnarly in it. Yeah. I, look forward <laughs> to that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. we got some fun stunt work involved. I actually have a stunt double for one scene in particular in this, which I was like, this is so freaking awesome. Nice. Yeah. So uh, I had an official stunt double this time. So I was like, right, that's so cool. cool. That's so <laughs> cool. But, um, so yeah, I'm working on that. Uh, I'm also working, oddly enough, on an animated series right now for um, that's going to be on uh, HBO Max eventually. I'm not sure if I could say what it is yet, but um, it's with Sesame Workshop. Okay. 
which is really exciting. So I, I, I was actually recording some for it yesterday. I, I do a lot of animals on there and I play a few humans as well, but I, I basically do a bunch of animal sounds. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So it is, it's a lot of fun. So it's kind of funny, you know, I, I'm, I'm known for playing a silent character for uh, film for adults, but I also do a lot of crazy animal sounds and cartoon voices for <laughs> shows for toddlers. So I, nice. I'm running that full spectrum. The jack of right all there. trades. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm doing that. Um, got, I'm also working on a sizzle reel for a zombie film with um, nice. some of the Terrifier team next month as well, which is exciting. Nice. And also I have another film s- supposed to be coming out soon that I, I had a fun little cameo role in it I did last year during the pandemic called uh, The Dark Offerings. Right. And we, you know, some of the people from Terrifier are involved with that too. Also, Felissa Rose is involved with it and um, right. Eileen Deese and some other horror people. And it was filmed exclusively over Zoom, which is nice. really cool. So it really cool. should be hopefully coming out later on this year. They just finished uh, awesome. post-production on it. So Perfect. a lot of exciting stuff right now. And who knows what else? Who knows what else, though? So. Absolutely. That's really exciting. And for anybody that wants to keep updated after this interview airs on where you're going to be, you know, at next, um, and what movie you're going to be doing and everything, yeah. definitely uh, check out your IMDb page because your IMDb definitely. page will, ha- will be updated with every single project you have that's in the yes. world that able to be announced. So, yeah. And I'll also be doing a ton of cons this year, too. So Nice. Yeah, Which is I'm, a nice change of pace because last year we didn't have any con. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm like, I, I, I do my first one next month. It's not really a con. I'm just doing a signing over at a Halloween Depot in LA. Nice. Which is going to be a lot of fun. And doing that for two days. But like starting in July, I'm doing like uh, Days of the Dead in Indianapolis. I'm going to be doing a lot of Days of the Dead, I think. Yeah, I think I've seen that the promotional poster on Facebook of Days of the Dead that year. Yeah. Oh, I think it was the- I'm excited. I'm very excited. I, I especially this September and October, I'm basically doing a convention every single weekend. So I'm just like, awesome. yes, get That's me back cool. out there. I'm so excited to get back out there and <laughs> seeing everybody and hanging out and partying and all that kind of right. stuff. So, Hopefully, I'll be able to meet you at one of these conventions coming up. If you do one definitely. in Maryland or Pennsylvania, I, I should. I, I'll try. To I I might be doing a one down in Maryland. We're we're working on that right now. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, it might be Monster Mania or something like that. Nice. If it's Monster Mania, that's in Hunt Valley, and that's only like 20 minutes from me. So and oh, I'm planning, I would like to go to Hunt Valley. We, yeah. My company's thinking of possibly be, doing a vendorship down there one of these years. Sweet. I don't know if it'll be this one or the next one, but if I'm down there, and I mean, it's not far away, I can easily, yeah. you know, if they have tickets available, I'll go. I would love to meet you like, in person. Oh, yeah. I, I've been wanting to do Monster Mania for a while, so I'm excited. That's Hopefully really can get that. Hopefully we can work something out and get us there. But um, also I might be doing uh, because I've done it. I did it back for uh, New Year's 2020 last year at Pop Rock and Hard there in Gettysburg. Nice. So I, I, I who knows I might be going back for that again because I'm like that. Yes. That was just fun. I was like, I uh, that was just really. I didn't even look at that as the convention more as just a way to hang out with horror fans ring right. in the new year. It's like boy, dude, we just didn't know what kind of year we were ringing in last year. Right. <laughs> We're all like, oh, this is going to yeah. be the best year ever. Oh, you have 2020, oh. double, vi- you know, perfect vision. Yeah. Damn. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hindsight's 2020 now. <laughs> yep. I know. And everybody's thinking like, oh, 2021 is going to be a better year, putting the pandemic behind us. But don't forget, we're going into it with the pandemic yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At least we had the vaccine coming out, though. You know what I mean? Like, but still. Exactly. I- but like, it's still, it's been a crazy, you know, it's been over a year and it's been crazy. Like, yeah. Intense, in, in, intense and insane. I was going to say them both at the same time, but yeah, it's been a crazy Intensity. Year. Intensity. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my God. That's great. But I thank you, David, for joining oh, me. It's been, it's been a, I had a really, a, a blast, you know, talking to you. It's been fun. Oh man, me too. I'm so glad we were able yes. to do this again. I'm sorry. I was like a few minutes late, but I was like, yeah, I got no, here. I was like, for, for some reason in my head, I was thinking we had to do this tonight at nine, and I, I was looking on my phone I'm like, oh no! <laughs> well, I sent you a message because it was like around three o'clock, and I just was like, yeah. no, hey, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on my Zoom whenever you're ready. Yeah, no yep. rush. I was like, I was in here just yep. scrambling, I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, okay, okay. I, I know it. you're doing. Uh, I'll do a plug for my buddy Greg, Greg Gilbert, Python's Paradise. You're doing his uh show, I believe, tomorrow, right? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, tell Greg I said hi. I will. 
<laughs> well, I thank you, Davis, for joining me. It's been so much fun. It's been a blast. And have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. You too, man. You take, take care, care. All right? Yep. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.